What's up? So if you're watching this video, you've probably already heard about ARC, and if not, I'm glad I can introduce it to you. Power. So what is Arc? Arc is a browser developed by the browser company. They're kind of a startup. This is pretty much their only product from what I can tell. And they're doing a great job so far. And they're really nice with the updates. So when you watch this video, it'll probably be technically outdated because they drop updates every week, introducing new features. And they're really good about doing the updates. Updates super fast. And once you update it, it'll tell you what's new within that update. And if you're ever curious about what's new in that update, you can come in here, do a new tab. If you type in what's new, it'll have like a little bit better of those release notes and it'll show up little pictures and stuff like that. So now you can paste URLs and they got a lot of different stuff. So I'm, I'll be making an advanced tutorial version of this. So if you're interested in that, be sure to drop a subscribe down below so you can stay tuned for that one. But let's get into the start, which is navigation. So here I am in the actual browser and you can see I have all, a lot of stuff going on all at once. So I'm just gonna break it down by everything that's on the page. So if we start out at the top, we're gonna have this, which is our sidebar control. So the sidebar is actually where all your tabs are located. So in most browsers, it's gonna be at the top somewhere, but in Arc, they kinda did it a different route. So if I click this, it'll actually hide that sidebar and open up my page in a full screen view, which is super nice. Or if I click it again, it'll stay there. So I like to keep it docked, but I know a lot of my friends like to keep it uh, kind of hidden away. That's how we, that's what we start out with um, at the top and that's how you navigate um, just that sidebar and getting that to pull up. So if you're ever stuck and you can't get it back, if you hit Command S, it'll actually pop it away and Command S will pull it back again. Now, if we go up here, this is gonna be all of my pinned tabs. So what's really nice about these pinned tabs is they stay no matter where I go. So you'll see if I switch this, which is switching my space, but we'll talk about that a little later. Uh, they're gonna stay there um, pretty much permanently. Anyway, we're gonna go into these different ones up here. And all of these are essentially different um, windows. So if I wanted to create a new one, all I would have to do is create a new tab. And by there's three different ways to create a new tab. You can either click the new tab button, which is the most self-explanatory, or you can hit Command T and a new tab will pop up, or you can double click anywhere where there's an empty space. So I'm gonna double click right here and I'm gonna type in google.com. So this is gonna be our new tab right here and google.com is right here. But let's say we wanna keep that pinned for all of our browsers. So we're gonna pull this up and all we have to do is drag it to this top bar and that Google logo is gonna appear right there. So now it's gonna stay right there all the time. And you might be wondering, Tommy, what if I click on something within the actual pin tab? Does it become a new pin tab or does it stay there? So they actually have a solution for this. So if I go to Gmail, for example, you'll see it'll pop up with this little um, peak view right here. Of, of Gmail and I can actually open it in full screen but then it becomes a different tab but you can always peek it and stay within that initial tab if you would like. Let's say we want to change the icon for this so all I have to do is double click on it and I can go down and hit change icon so I can change this to any emoji I want or I can change it to any of these and if I just change it to a circle right here you'll see it'll stay like that so I have a lot of this for a lot of my own programs that I keep and what's cool is if you have specific things like Google Calendar or your mail, if I hover over them, it'll show me my upcoming event right here. And if I hover over my mail, it'll show me my most recently read mail. I obviously disabled it for this video. For this top navigation bar, I'm gonna come in and just delete this right here. Now, if we go below that, you're gonna see I have all of these right here, which are gonna be pinned tabs, but these aren't gonna stay. So I don't know necessarily what the official term for them is called. So these are actually just tabs that stay within this specific space. So if I go to a different spot, you'll see these all change. If I go to this spot, it changes again. Um, but these top ones stay the same. So if I come back right here and all of these are going to be like different things that I've pinned. And what's cool is I can actually create folders within here so I can save different folders for different things I need. Um, here's like all my AI tools that I, I've used in the past. And what's cool is that these all stay here and I don't have to close them because they're always gonna be open. Whereas if I create a new tab down here, it 
that's subject to change, you know? So I can go Google right here. If I go to Google down here, you'll see it's at the very bottom and I can hit the clear to um, get rid of all of that. And anything I drag down here, I can actually just hit delete on and it'll go away. Now these are really nice because it's a great way to keep track of things that you wanna keep open and things that you don't. And lastly, I wanna talk about this right here, which is the URL. And so the URL right here, we can copy it easily. But another cool thing that Arc does is if I click right here, I have Boost, which if you're curious about that, you can uh, watch my video right here, but it essentially lets you change up all your tabs on your browser. And here's where all my extensions live. So all of the Chrome extension stores extensions are available on here. And I can actually go in here and create screenshots or I can take a picture of the full page, which is super nice. And a really nice feature about their screenshot tool is that I can come in here and I can actually just like select certain objects, shave it straight to Arc, or I can send it out to other places, or I can send it into an easel, which I'll also talk about a little bit later. Next, we're gonna talk about how to actually navigate the entire browser rather than just the tab window. And these are called spaces. So what spaces are is essentially all of my different spots. So you can picture this as like having different versions of Chrome open at once. So you can have like five different windows of Chrome open. But what this does is each one of these is within the browser and I can switch to it super easily. So I can switch like this and really easily navigate around to different spots. And each spot has its own saved spot, like saved tabs and everything like that. So it makes managing tabs super easy because I don't have to deal with all of this. So I can come in here and I can open up all of my like Canvas stuff. So this is for my college. If I go here, it's gonna have like my homepage. So this is all my basic stuff. This is for another job and these are for our different jobs. But essentially it's super nice because then I can save all of my stuff to that one and all the tabs that I use in that one and then switch between them super quickly. And this becomes even more helpful when we're dealing with having several different accounts, which I know a lot of people do. Like I have my school account and then I have my G regular like Gmail account that I always use. So to switch between these, I can actually go into this school space right here. And this is set up with a different profile. So if I hit edit and I go to profiles right here, I can create a new profile. And what this does is it's gonna take out all of my previous browser um, history and stuff from that Gmail account and create a new Gmail account for this one. So let's say I'm creating a new one. I'm gonna call this school and I can pick which space to add it to. And let me create a new space for this one. So I created a new space and essentially to do that, all you have to do is create a new tab and the same way I said before, and then just type in new space. And once you do that, it'll pop up with a new space and you can come in here, come up to there and hit edit. And I can actually rename the space right here. So I'm gonna call this test and we're gonna edit it again. I can add an icon to it. So you'll see down here, it just has like a random circle icon, but I can switch the icon to kind of whatever I want to. And then I can change the theme, which is super fun. Um, they have all of these different colors and stuff like that. that I can change it to, or I can add them because I feel like the base colors look kind of ugly and I can actually make it a little bit nicer and fit to my taste. You can even darken it or lighten it. And you'll see that difference right there. And then this right here will actually change the transparency of the tab. So you'll see I can peek whatever's beneath it really quickly um, if I want to do that. And then lastly is this, which is like a grain texture that I'll put actually on the window. It's kind of hard to see probably on film, but I can switch whatever texture I want to. See, it gets a little darker with each, with each one. I can switch how much grain there is, which is super nice. And now we're gonna go into edit one more time. We're gonna hit profile and then new profile. And we're gonna call this one test as well. And I'm gonna hit create profile. And now all of the login details on this one are gonna be to a separate Gmail account. So everything in here is kind of like a sandbox. It's by itself. So when I go back to this one, it'll be a totally different login details and all that kind of stuff. So that part's super nice. And that's pretty much it for spaces. You'll kind of figure out your own workflow as you use it more and more. I like to just think of it as different windows of um, a browser so you can have all your windows open. And that's, this is like doing that, but all contained in one. You can also have several instances of Arc opened up at once though, but I have never found a need to actually do that. And lastly, we're gonna go over and talk about Easel. So what Easels are is you can kind of envision a mood board, but you can clip new things on the web. Here's one of my previous Easels. So you can see I'm actually able to drag different things and write different notes in here. And 
one part that's really cool about this is that I can add images and mood boards as much as I want. So one thing that I like to do is I can create a new tab and then when I go to the new tab, all I have to do is hit new easel to create a new easel. So I'll just call it test easel right there. And what's super nice, I can drag this anywhere I want. I have all of these different tools. So I have one for text. So I can just type in new text right here and you'll see it'll create text. I can move that wherever I want, do arrows um, and I can circle things. And you're actually able to collaborate on this in real time, which is super nice. Um, so you can have other people doing it. It's all entirely free as well. So there's no like enterprise thing yet. Essentially what I can do here is I can add an image and so if I add like this picture of a harmonica, for example, this will just pop up right there. And what's cool about this picture specifically is it's transparent. So I'm actually able to drag in transparent images so you can create actually super nice easels that look super nice because you can put whatever design you want on them. But let's talk about the most powerful feature, which is their live feature. So if I type in weather right here and go to weather.com and let's just create a clipping of this right here. So all I have to do is I have to come up here, create the clipping and you'll see it'll auto select some stuff. So I'll do this right there. And once I hit it to save to test easel right here, it'll pop up in my test easel and I hit the play button and it actually shows me a live version of the website every time. So this is going to be updated weather updates basically forever. As long as you open the easel, it'll have that updated weather. You can do all kinds of things like this if you want to check like a stock of a store or if you just want to check on certain updates and like you can even do like your canvas page to check your recent assignments, things like that. Um, it's super nice for and if we want to do um, this in split screen, all I have to do is take this, drag it to the left or right or bottom or top. And so I can actually take the Pinterest and just drag it over here and then I can ty type in test easel right here. And I'm able to actually drag the images directly over, which is super nice. And that way I can make a really nice looking mood board because I'm able just to click them and drag them over. Some images don't work entirely because they're a different format. But all you have to do is just grab this clipping feature and clip it, and then you can put it right into test easel. And you have all these different things for inspiration for a room or whatever you want to. And then once you're done with it, you can click right here and hit share. And I can have anyone can view, anyone can edit, or I can make it private and I could copy the link, send it off to people and they can view it um, just from their own browsers. They don't even have to have Arc or anything like that. So it's a super nice system. That's pretty much it for Arc. This is kind of the beginner um, tutorial version. I'm gonna have a more advanced tutorial version which is gonna build on this one. So if you're curious about that, drop a subscribe. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.